how can we make sure that our skills are fit for the future? In this short podcast, I'll be finding out more about the importance of skills in the UK and what that means for all of us. First, I spoke to Kate Dearden, Head of Research, Policy and Politics at Community Union. I wanted to get her views based on the research that Community has done on this topic. Hi Kate, thanks very much for joining. So let's get started then. Uh, Can you tell us, what is the problem with skills in the UK? So We know that prior to the pandemic, employers were facing skills shortages and that nationwide we faced a huge mismatch between the skills workers held and the skills that they actually needed to be able to succeed in their jobs. A report by the Industrial Strategy Council earlier on in the year found that workers are even more likely to be overskilled or underskilled by 2030. And 80% of the workforce are already in work today of that 2030 workforce. So it's a huge problem. The report also found that an additional 7 million workers could be underskilled for their jobs. And that's around 20% of the current labour market. So obviously matters a great deal to our economy and comes at a really high cost actually to employers and workers alike. So that skills mismatch is a huge problem in the UK, which impacts pay and living standards and even job satisfaction for workers as well. But the UK has also got one of the lowest levels of government and business investment in adult training amongst OECD countries. So reskilling of the existing workforce will be one of the major challenges between now and 2030. In addition to that, you know, the nature of work and careers are changing fast and those skills are the new currency in the world of work um, and will be absolutely critical if we are to successfully revive post-COVID Britain. Once we'd kind of determined what the problem was, I know there was another report which kind of looked at what needs to be done to kind of solve the skills challenge that we have in the UK. I've seen that the report kind of calls for employers to invest in training, to champion learning and for local partnerships. and, And it's all about a strong campaign for lifelong learning. And we know that Roy Rickus, Community General Secretary, really was heavily involved in that report. Clearly, it's an important issue for community and its members. Can you explain exactly why, why it matters so much? We think that the current government policies and initiatives of actually targeting the areas where skills mismatches could occur are just not sufficient in scale to address those skills gaps that are predictive, as well as which workers are currently being impacted. So, and in addition to that, you know, the context in which we're operating in uh, with the pandemic and with the financial crisis that we're looking towards increases the urgency for which partners in the skill system need to adapt and respond, including us as a trade union. But it also amplifies the need for a clear overarching vision, which can guide skills partners to work together and adapt to rapidly changing skills demands. And part of that increased engagement of trade unions and employers in both the design and implementation of skills provision will be crucial and key in driving up participation in job related training and actually cultivating the lifelong learning culture. Union learning funds were a prime example and route to creating that culture. They provided vital support for workers to develop in their careers, re-skill for new jobs or roles, and actually learn new skills as well. Unfortunately, this month, the government announced plans to cut that union learning fund, the 12 million funding, which does support workers to develop at work. And we're campaigning against those cuts and think it is going against what government should be doing with working with partners, creating a lifelong learning culture to actually address the challenges we do face in the skills system. And we think that social partners need to play a greater and important role in education and training in the UK. And that's something we should be working towards and not not cutting back from. And then most importantly, we think that workers must be agents throughout the changing work landscape and our economy. With the demand for more existing skills, as well as new skills, the change cannot be something that just simply happens to workers. It has to be with them and for them. And that's one of our key messages as well as to you know, why it's important for us and why Rory was really proud to, to lead that report as a member of the Industrial Strategy Council. At the most recent community conference, um, Skills was voted to be a flagship campaign for the union. Can you tell us a bit about what that campaign has looked like in practice? Yes, so our campaign is called Your Skills, Your Future. Our members chose this campaign. It's led by them and we want this campaign to be as empowering for members as possible and our members can better identify where their skill sets lies and how they can better understand their skills but also encourage members to take ownership of their own skills if they do need to transition in their careers or with the changes that we're seeing to our economy and workplaces. That's why over the past few months we've been working with Workabird who are an innovative tech for good startup that aims to improve working conditions for millions of workers across the UK. So we've also we've been working with them, but also with community members from sectors all across the union to see if 
the language we use is correct, if the questions we're asking work, and even if the design of the assessment fits and is accessible for all our members. And we've come up with a skills assessment for every single community member to take part in. So we use basically a, a database from across Europe. It's the European Skills Competencies, Qualifications and Occupations database. And that identifies and categorises different skills, competencies, qualifications uh, that are relevant for our labour market in education. So members will be able to access the assessment, search for their current job role and then be presented with their essential skills that they use day to day in their roles. And then members themselves will assess themselves against each of the sort of essential skills and how confident they feel in that skill, but also look at optional skills for their role as well and then assess themselves against that. But we're also going further in the assessment and asking members about their literacy, numeracy and digital skills. And where there are gaps, we're looking to signpost members to our brilliant learning team at Community who are able to provide resources and further support on learning and training opportunities. Because we feel like getting union members new skills has always been at the heart of trade unionism and this campaign is kicking off by doing just that. And also once members complete the assessment, they will also receive a download, a skills passport of their current skills so they can access them whenever they need it. So following this skills assessment, we're going to be looking to continue to get more members and employers involved in the campaign. And using this assessment, it will be a basis for a dialogue and workplace learning with employers, how we can provide a more tailored offer for community learning and identify those gaps and actually establish the level of support members do need to excel in their skills in their current jobs. And the aim of the campaign as a whole is to take members on a, on a journey of their skills that they need for the future and their future roles to thrive in their work and their personal lives as well. And we're really keen to create a positive skills culture to help our members transition with change and upskill if they need to. So I'm here with Caroline Taylor, who is National Secretary for the Finance Sector at Community Union. Um, so Caroline, what should people expect to happen to their jobs in the next 10 years? How do you think they will change? Well, it's a huge question, Anna, and it's going to be different for everyone. However, you only have to look at how much change has happened in the last 10 years, as well as more specifically this year, to know that the pace of empo employment change isn't going to slow down. The way we work now is very different to the way we worked five years ago, for example. Not only is technology changing rapidly, but the human need for a better work-life balance is also a huge driver for workplace change. For example, in my last job, I used to drive all around the country with a map and sticky notes telling me where to go. You fast forward five to ten years later and everyone's got sat navs in cars and you just type in an address and off it goes. And then moving forward again, another five to ten years and they're looking at driverless cars. But I think more specifically, if you look at the last six months, organisations would never have thought that they would be getting their whole workforces to work from home and getting them to use more digital tools than they've ever used before to, make, to keep their organisations running. And people have adapted to that. So I think... If they can do that in such a short space of time, it just shows that I think change is going to carry on moving rapidly. So obviously, people will probably need to change some of the skills that they have to keep up with the, the pace of change that's obviously getting faster and faster. So I wanted to ask, do you think that people across the UK are taking skills seriously enough? I think it's more a case of are people clear and understanding what their current skills are and what they may need for the future? There tend to be a lot of people who are happy doing their current role and don't ever think that they want to do something else, but they don't realise, one, the skills that they use every day and what those actually are, and also what would they do if their job was to change. It's a bit like, put it into simple terms, a bit like an MOT or service for your car. I think people should regularly think and reevaluate what the skills they use in their current jobs, what ones they've picked up in that year, to understand what it is they do and also that build-up of skills that they've got that they can adapt and reuse and change if they need to. For example, I guarantee there's a lot of people this year who wouldn't have even thought about how they use Teams or Zoom or Skype as much as they have had to and learn all the different skills that they've needed in this scenario. So I think it's, it's more a case of people thinking, well, actually, should they keep some sort of record of all the skills they build up? Because even stuff they use in their day-to-day -day life other than just their jobs will be important moving forward. And what about the kind of people who maybe are already very highly skilled? So for example, they do have a degree, even multiple degrees, or you know, professional qualifications, say in accountancy, 
do people in those kind of scenarios also need to worry about this? Yeah, I think worry is probably a wrong word, um, but maybe mindful. Education mm. and courses and qualifications do date and they do need to be kept refreshed regularly as well and I think it's just because you've got a degree in a certain subject doesn't mean that you can't pick up or learn new skills that either link or complement your degree often skills and experience that we pick up doing the job are just as valuable as the qualifications you get and somebody who is academic and can know the ins and outs of everything might not necessarily have the hands-on capacity or the skills to put it in place and so actually learning those can only complement what they've already got so I think it's not necessarily worry, but just be mindful of how the world is changing. It doesn't mean that just because you got a degree 20 years ago, it's still going to be relevant today. So then thinking about that, obviously skills can be quite a broad term. So how does somebody go about understanding what skills they're going to need for their job in the future and what skills they currently have in their job might be? Most jobs will probably have job descriptions in terms of being able, so when you apply for jobs, you, they know roughly what those skills that they're expecting. But actually, when you actually get down to doing those jobs, you realise there are actually more skills and more things that you use to do that. And I think maybe monitoring it and noting it down, even in terms of a bit of a, a skills passport or much like you do with your CV, just noting down what it is you need to do that job. But a lot of the times it can be about the attitudes and behaviours. It doesn't just have to be about the skills because those can be learned. So if you've got an an open enough attitude and mind to learning and picking up things, actually the skills that you need for further roles, you can pick them up. And it it is about retaining that knowledge and ability to pick up new new skills. So it's it's not always the the hard sort of skills that you might first think of that, that matter. It's actually also those softer skills and and actually the the learning mindset that could be the most important yeah and I think you can look at a a list on a job description and say yeah I can do all of those but actually there are it's the nuances behind that that actually help you do the job well that you pick up and learn throughout that and actually acquire the extra skills and attributes that you need to do that and finally then what would your advice be to somebody who might be starting to think about their future skills needs I think the first step, I guess, is start with what you already know. List down what you know you do and the things that you do without thinking. I guess from a perspective of you've been doing your job for a while, you do these things in the same way that you get in your car and drive off without thinking. It becomes a habit and you sometimes dismiss those as valuable skills, but they are. So for me, I would say potentially keeping a skills profile and updating it regularly. And it might not be stuff that you do in your role. It could be stuff you do outside of work. For example, if you volunteer with your local guide organisation, you happen to do the finances for it or you organise their events. They're all skills that you build up as part of your um, everyday life that can be useful in, in other roles as well. So for me, I think it is about keeping up to date with what you've got, noting the skills that you you think you have and looking actually at the bits that you enjoy and where you can improve them or where potentially you can expand on them and knowing what you've already got gives you the ability to know where you can learn to improve or to move on to other roles once you've got a skills base to look at it'll help you develop the ability to see what it is where you need to grow thank you for taking the time to listen to this podcast I really appreciate it and I hope it's given you some food for thought about skills and about the future. I know that it's made me think more about what I'll need to do to get ready. If you want to join community and shape our approach to the conversation around skills, you can do so by visiting community-tu.org join. That's community-tu.org join.